Hello everybody, welcome back to the Miser's Guide to Ebony. In this video, I'm going to be talking about designing a PvP ground march that you can use to attack other players. Um, to start off, I will give my disclaimer for this series that the information in here is speculative and very simplified and possibly even incomplete. Um, there's a lot of variables in this game and I can only cover so much and also a lot of the information out there is speculative. It's all based off of experiences, testing and so on. Um, so none of it is an absolute guarantee. Uh, so take everything you hear with a grain of salt and uh, find your own experiences and so on and adjust as, uh, as necessary. But you can consider this to be a starting place uh, that you can use to uh, be effective in the game. And also realize that many different people have different interpretations and uh, you'll hear a lot of different things, but I will try to talk about that a little bit as we go through. Um, the video is about a PvP ground march. So it's useful to talk about what the battle looks like when the ground are actually engaging and uh, the troop itself looking at its uh, different stats, what it's good at, what it's bad at, and how you can use a PvP ground march effectively. Let's start off by looking at the field of battle. So at the field, the field of battle looks something like this when your ground are actually engaged in the fighting. The siege have been fighting the siege, as they do. Uh, the cavalry have already started to attack other cavalry when they came into rage, uh, range. Um, and if they've managed to finish off that cavalry, uh, or if the ground have come into range, they might switch over to attacking ground troops. So there's a melee kind of cluster in the middle. The archers have also already engaged and have started wiping out the cavalry, uh, but they've not begun to be attacked at all. Uh, if the cavalry and the ground are able to get marked, uh, wiped out, then uh, possibly you've even lost your cavalry, but the ground will now be able to march forward and uh, attack the archers of the enemy and that's really what you try to accomplish with ground marches is you want to get through the uh, ground and the cavalry of your opponent so that your ground can march over and wipe out the archers of the enemy that's really their primary purpose um, if we look at the unit themselves let me open it up here on the in the game as well uh, the attack is subpar they don't have really strong attack uh, nor should they because their HP and defense are phenomenal. They have the best HP and defense of any unit in the game. They are really great uh, for those. Uh, meaning, meaning that they can withstand a lot of damage while they are moving themselves forward. They still have really good speed as well. So they can cross the battlefield, take a lot of damage, but if they still make it in large numbers, they can deal a lot of damage uh, simply in terms of sheer numbers. Um, and they can really wipe out uh, archers in that way. Uh, they meet cavalry first on the battlefield, and uh, this is this is where some of their weaknesses come into play, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But first, they'll meet cavalry on the, the field of battle, and I say cavalry, but also the opponent's ground as well. And if they can make it past the cavalry and the, the opponent's ground, then they can move forward and decimate the archers. The strengths of a ground march uh, for either solo attacks or rallies is if they can make it past the melee cluster, then they can decimate the opponent's archers. Uh, ground troops are so effective at getting rid of archers that uh, they're just such a high priority march to have in your arsenal. They are also sometimes effective at softening up enemy targets. So if they have a lot of ground, but they, they're either uh, ghosting their cavalry and you can, you can attack fast enough, or, uh, or, or I don't know, just even as a, a mixed rally, sometimes ground can have such an impact in softening up those archers that it makes it that uh, the enemy will just crumble in front of you. Okay, setting up the preset. So here's the part where I'm going to uh, give a demonstration of what the preset might look like, but keep in mind that uh, different people have different interpretations of layer sizes and so on and what you should prioritize. Uh, so take this as information, but not as an absolute. I will also mention that uh, in the other video when I was making it, I noticed uh, something that I had not seen before, that the March preset, I mean, granted, I haven't made them in a long time, the March preset has changed a little bit, at least unless I didn't know how to use it before. 
Um, so what I suggest you do is figure out what your actual March size is. For me, it's apparently 1.509500. Um, like we, and you want to figure that out by using the appropriate general. So the, the general I'll be using for my ground march is Trajan. So I make sure that he's there. It'll tell you his march size, uh, 1.509500. So I'll make a note of that. Um, now, when I go over to my actual uh, preset over here in the uh, rally spot, go to March preset, I choose the slot that I'm going to uh, place that that March. So for me, it's going to be my third one. Um, I can enable my subsidies if I'd like to have them enabled. Um, I'm going to start over here at the bottom. And I did this with the other video too. And the reason I started at the bottom is because uh, you know how many units you're going to be using for your layers, but you don't necessarily know how many units are going to be left over for your primary troops. Um, so we'll, we'll start from there. I choose layers of 1,000. Uh, you could do 2,000, you could do 5,000, 4,000. Honestly, I don't know if it's going to make that much of a difference because it's all situational. 1,000 is fine in most cases. In fact, a lot of the times having just one unit is probably enough for your layers. The layers just have to exist. Um, the advantage of having like 500, 1,000, couple thousand is that if the layers of your opponent are small enough that yours can wipe them out, uh, then your troops will start to attack other layers and it kind of snowballs from there. Um, so you could put a couple thousand, but uh, keep in mind that the higher that you increase these layers, the less troops you will have in the end to use on your uh, on your actual like main component troops. All right. Huh, that's weird. So I was talking about that preset thing doing a, a weird thing that. Uh, increased my March size, and it doesn't seem to be doing that anymore. But if you check in my other video, it was showing me like two point something million. Uh, I, that, I might have just had a glitch because I did not have any kind of uh, a March size increase. So I'm not really sure what happened there. Just make sure that your March size is actually uh, matching what it should. So for me, it should be like 1.509500. So that's perfect. All right, so I'm going to put my subsidies back on. Okay, so I have a thousand layers of a thousand units pretty much all the way up. Um, I, I started to increase it here. I have like 2000. It's not necessarily I, not necessary to do that. Um, I could just leave it as a thousand, but I, I don't know. I don't know what went through my mind there. It's not like it makes a big difference. Uh, but what you will see is that my tier 10, I included 5,000 musketeers. Uh, and then my tier 11, I also included 10,000 of the archers. And tier 12, I have 20,000 archers. And tier 13, I have 30,000 archers. But Miser, I thought this was a ground march. Yes, it is. Uh, but the reason that I have these archers is because if the enemy does have cavalry, even in small quantities, those cavalry are going to do a lot of damage to my ground and they're going to slow down my ground. So if I'm able to wipe out smaller uh, layers of cavalry, I want to do so. I want to uh, have enough archers in here that they are going to be able to wipe out any cavalry. I actually want to increase this. I'm going to put maybe... 25,000. Um, do I have enough? Okay, let's go 30,000. So I actually want to increase my uh, archers in the tier 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 uh, to kind of compensate for the idea that uh, I could get slowed down by the cavalry of my opponent. All right. Um, so I think that's enough. 30,000 counter units here, there. Um, I'm going to actually put this as 35,000 since I have a little more space. 35, 350, no, 35,000. That's good. Okay, now the rest, I've increased the size of these layers a little bit, but uh, I wouldn't worry about that. They can stay at 1,000 or 2,000. I don't think it makes that big of an impact. Um, but the bulk of my units, you'll notice, are tier 12, 
soldiers, tier 12 ground, uh, tier 13 ground, I have quite a bit as well, and I have uh, tier 14 ground. But it, it kind of starts with the highest number of ground being tier 12, and then, oh, I actually want to change this a bit. So I'm going to go with 400,000 tier 13 ground, 300,000 tier 14 ground, and however many tier 12 that I can. So it, it looks like 600 and something thousand, 400,000, and 300,000. And the reason I have more tier 12 than the rest is just because of cost effectiveness. Uh, tier 12 units are very strong, strong in terms of uh, the power cost or the power designation that they get. So what I mean by that is if you look in ground units, uh, the tier 14 unit is worth, why do I keep clicking that? Is worth 122 power. Uh, the tier 12 unit is worth 53. Um, but look at the stats, like 53 is less than half of uh, the power of a tier 14, which is 122. But if you look at the stats, uh, 9,020, let's say 27 and 54, are the stats less than half? No, not even close. It's 2,500 less. Um, yeah, like, I mean, these stats are still pretty incredible for the consideration that the power um, is significantly less. So if I am attacking another player and uh, I lose, but uh, we kill the same number of, of, of troops in terms of uh, in terms of power or so on, I will have done a lot more damage uh, simply because the value of these targets or of these units is significantly higher than uh, that of a tier 14 or even a tier 13 unit, which is still pretty good, but not quite as uh, great as a tier 12. So tier 12 units should be the bulk of your preset with tier 13 following them a bit and then some tier 14. You don't want to go all one way. Uh, you want to have it spread out a little bit so that you can break through layers if you can. Uh, but keep that in mind that uh, tier 12 are just a phenomenal unit in terms of their economical value. Um, Okay, I think that's about it for the March preset for ground. Um, so if you did appreciate this video, please like and subscribe. And uh, I do want to say a, a special thank you to channel members. Uh, if you have decided to support the Miser's Guide to Ebony, I definitely want to give you a special thank you and a shout out uh, for doing so. And if you want to become a member, you can click the join button and check out the perks that you will receive. Um, also consider joining the Discord channel so you can communicate with other players, uh, get advice, share advice, and so on. Uh, once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.